Hey guys, so this is going to be your sex and relationship questions answered, kind of part two because my first video did pretty well and I got so many more questions after posting that video and I wanted to answer them for you. Just think of me as like an older sister, someone that you can trust, that won't judge you. But as I said in that video, I don't know everything and I can only speak from my own personal experience. So if you are having an issue or something you're worried about, definitely go to a doctor or talk to a trusted adult because I can only give you so much help and just stuff that I've actually personally experienced. So I'm going to go through and just start jumping into all the questions that you guys left me. First question comes from Lauren and she says, are you still doing your bra boo video? And yes I am. I talked about this a little bit before but I wanted to make a video talking about my favorite bras and honestly ways to make your boobs look as good as possible. And for me, you know, I am someone, I have naturally a larger chest, so it is something I'm just aware of, and of course, like, I just want my boobs to look good, like, that's pretty normal. I did share that I wear a 34C, and a lot of people were telling me that I was lying, that that's not my actual bra size, and that's the bra size that I buy, and it seems to work fine for me. People were saying that my boobs looked different than theirs, bigger than theirs, so there's no way that could be my size. And honestly, all you have to say is, number one, yes, if you are wearing a good bra or investing in a good bra, your boobs can look really good. I also have people comment on Instagram that I got a boob job. Not true. Definitely not true. But the bottom line is, is people's bodies are shaped differently. So just because my boobs don't look like yours doesn't really mean anything. And that's not an actual like valid argument. But yes, to answer Lauren's question, I am still making that video. And I'm probably going to add swimsuits to it as well because now it is like swimsuit season and people are wearing bikinis and stuff. And I've had a lot of questions about good swimsuits to just make your boobs look good or good swimsuits if you have a bigger chest or a smaller chest and all that kind of stuff. So I think I'll go ahead and cover both of those topics in my boob video. Kayla says, can you do a video on long distance relationships? Yes, I will. I know that now school is ending, summer is about to be here. And at least for me, I remember a lot of my friends going off to college and even my sister and her friends they are breaking up with like the long term high school boyfriends because they're going to be in different states and different places next year. I've definitely had a long term relationship that was long distance and it's, it's difficult. You know, there are different components that go into it and different struggles and challenges, but I think there are also some things about it that are really great and awesome and it just kind of depends on the people and the situation and your trust and all that kind of stuff. So I could definitely make a video about long distance relationships, but there's a lot of stuff to cover so it would have to be its own video entirely. Marie says, tell us some of your best, worst pickup lines that you've had. And I guess, let me think, hmm. Okay, I can think of two just off the top of my head. Totally random, two different guys. One guy, and granted, he was a little bit intoxicated at the time, but he proceeded to tell me that I was so beautiful, I was so pretty, I was even prettier than his mom. Which is a sweet thing to say, like his mom was a very beautiful woman, but it was just so random. I didn't know I was being compared to his mother. So that was kind of funny and something kind of, I guess a little bit odd. I have never been told that before. So, you know, it was original, I guess. And the second awkward pickup line, it was less of a pickup line, but more of just a funny moment with a guy. There was this boy I had a crush on, and he was a bit older than me, he was a senior in college, and I was just very intimidated by him, and he made me really nervous, and so one night he invited me to his fraternity party, and he told me we would hang out there and stuff. So I went, and I was super excited, but again, just nervous to be around him and hanging out with him. And we started talking, and he was being kind of shy and a little quiet. And then he just turned to me and proceeded to say, so, um, do you want to grind? And while that's not like that terrible of a thing to say, it was just such an interesting moment because this guy that I was like so kind of nervous in front of and stuff asked me a question that I felt like just brought me back to being like 13 at a middle school dance. And it took me a second to actually process that he was like dead serious and I was like, okay, I think I can handle this. Like, I think I'm not as scared of this guy anymore because that was just such, like, an awkward, like, cute thing to say and just something I didn't expect him to say at all. So that was funny. I don't think he watches my videos. If he does, I still totally think he's adorable. But that was just really hilarious and, like, was so unexpected because I felt like that was something, like, a 12 or 13-year-old boy would say to me. Kate says, does it still count as sex if it's just oral sex? Yes, it does. You still need to be careful. There are still like some dangers and health things with having oral sex. But more than that, I've definitely heard from like younger girls 
saying like, oh, well, we didn't actually have sex, you know, we just, you know, messed around or hooked up or, you know, oral sex, all that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, it still matters and you still are being intimate, I think very intimate with someone's, you know, private parts and stuff. And you still should be selective and just careful and take it seriously. Like you shouldn't just think, oh, just because it's not actual sex, like it doesn't matter. And I would think that would obviously be like something you would just know but I definitely have had a lot of people like say like you know does it matter if I do this like is it a big deal and I definitely think yeah it still is a big deal a little off topic but I do know of a story of a girl and a lot of people have heard this story I'm not like outing her or anything but she was in a car with a guy and she was um, using her mouth and she I guess like choked or gagged or something I don't know and she threw up all over his car and I've you know told that story to some people and a lot of people have said that that's pretty common and they've heard that story about other people and whatever so I mean just just know like yeah it still is an intimate act and I still don't think you should take it not seriously just because it's not actual sex I think it still does matter Samantha says having sex on my period and of course you can still have sex on your period you just need to be careful of course and you know put a towel down go in the shower do something like that whatever but one thing that is interesting is you know having your period that is just a natural part of life and of being a girl and I definitely had guys that I wanted to either gauge their maturity level or I guess like their intentions with me and like what you know why they were hanging out with me talking to me so you know if there was a guy that like wanted to hang out and I kind of got the vibe that he wanted to hook up or thought we would hook up or he was hoping that was where it would lead or whatever you know sometimes I would say oh yeah but you know I'm not feeling that well because I'm on my period and then if the guy immediately says oh I don't want to hang out anymore or, oh I'll wait to see you you can then kind of judge that maybe he was hoping something more would go down or he was kind of planning for that and the same as if you're dating a guy and then, you know, he says, oh, you know, come over spend the night or hang out with me tonight. And you say you have your period and he's like, oh, that's okay. You know, you know, I want to make you feel better or that doesn't gross me out or I don't mind or whatever. Again, you can kind of gauge the maturity level of a boy. Not to say that like they're supposed to, you know, not be grossed out by that or anything, but it is a natural you know part of being a woman and so if a boy is you know trying to be sexually intimate with you they should at least be mature enough to realize that and respect that and understand that the next question comes from Raquel and she says when did you switch from pads to tampons now this is a question from a girl that is a little bit younger and I have made a whole video about pads and tampons and periods and all that kind of stuff and I still get a ton of questions from girls that are really young and that need some help or have some questions that they feel embarrassed about and the best place to ask me those questions is honestly on my Facebook public page it's just Megan Parkin and it's like a fan page and you can go there and message me and I message a ton of people back on there because it's really easy to navigate through the messages and just communicate with you guys back and forth but as far as pads to tampons now that it is about to be summertime and you might want to be swimming or in a swimsuit it's kind of difficult to wear a pad with a swimsuit because they are bulky you can see them it almost kind of feels like wearing a diaper honestly but I will say I had my period for about a year before I switched from pads to tampons because I was nervous I didn't think I would be able to put a tampon in correctly I was worried it would hurt I was just worried it would get lost or whatever I just didn't really understand I guess how they worked or how it was going to work for me now something interesting to note about tampons which you might not know if you've only ever used pads is there are different sizes of tampons so if you are nervous about using one or thinking it's going to hurt or whatever you don't have to start off with one that has like a really high absorbent that's going to be something you would leave in like a whole day or for eight hours or whatever um, there definitely are ones that are smaller and you're supposed to change them more frequently because they're littler and just if you do go to like you know a grocery store or to a convenience store or not a convenience store to like a Walgreens and stuff and you look in the tampon aisle you will see there are so many different kinds I would definitely recommend any that have our like our plastic I think the ones that are cardboard that you get in like a school bathroom or like a movie theater bathroom like out of those little machines those are painful for anyone honestly those are not comfortable cardboard just I don't do it if you are nervous about tampons definitely go for like plastic and just do a little bit of research you know go there and look through the different kinds and compare them like I said there are some boxes that have like different size ones in them so you can you know figure out which one works for you but ultimately I think switching from pads to a tampon 
it is a nice thing because I feel like tampons are a lot more convenient and you can kind of have them be more discreet and once you kind of make that switch it's really difficult to think about you know what you were doing when you were using a pad before not to say you have to use a tampon but personally it was something I was nervous about when I was younger but I'm really glad that I did kind of get over that because I much prefer using tampons now Lynn's question is what is cheating what do you think about Instagram and cheating this is a very interesting thing, it's something I would love to make a full video on because I've had scenarios where I've like talked about a guy or introduced you guys to a boy and then like random girls would go on Instagram and would like DM them like suggested photos or they would like like 50 of their photos in a row and then send them messages with their numbers and stuff and like just stuff that was like a little bit out there and a little bit crazy and it was always guys that I would like be with so then the guys would like show me these messages that were obviously coming from my followers and my subscribers and there was one girl in particular that she did this literally to probably like five different guys that I knew and it was just something she kept doing over and over again and I honestly think she might be a little, a little crazy because it was just something so bizarre and like the guys would literally like message her back and be like, you know, I know like you're a friend of Megan's or you know Megan or whatever, but like this is kind of weird. And I think even to one of the guys, she even started off by saying like, yeah, you probably know my friend Megan, but anyways, like let's hang out, let's do this. Like I saw her video about you, you're cute, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know, just a, just a very odd scenario. Um, but as far as Instagram and cheating and all that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments what y'all's thoughts are. I would love to hear them. Personally, I think a lot of guys don't realize that what they like on Instagram shows up in the feed. Like, it's public. I've definitely seen some guys go on there and like a bunch of photos of girls in, like, lingerie, borderline, like, porn-looking photos. And maybe they have girlfriends or they're engaged or something. And it just, it is a little bit awkward. I mean, I think if you're going to be liking, like, really suggestive photos on Instagram, it can just kind of make you look a little bit sketchy and weird, I guess, because it is something kind of private, and if you're doing it so publicly, it's like, why do you not care that people are seeing that? I also know a lot of girls just don't care. They think, oh, whatever, like, my boyfriend can do whatever he wants on Instagram. I mean, I think it's different for me because I, like, have grown up around the internet, and I've done so much stuff on the internet, and I just, I really pay a lot of attention to it. And for me, a like on Instagram, I don't just scroll down my feed and like every single photo. Like, I do like pictures that, you know, inspire me or that I enjoy or make me feel a certain way or I support in a way. So, I don't know. I've definitely had guys be like, oh, whatever, I like every single photo I see. But I personally think there always is a little something behind a like. So it would be hard to gauge if I would find that cheating if a guy is liking a bunch of pictures of another girl on Instagram and you're dating him. Like I said, I would love for this to be a conversation in the comments below. At the end of the day, it is kind of stupid. It is just an app. But I definitely do think people do flirt on it and do use it as a way to kind of subtly flirt and hit on each other. Moving on further from cheating, like I said, it kind of depends on your relationship. I mean, anything from, you know, hitting on someone to maybe if you're just liking their Instagram picture, you're not flat out hitting on them by saying anything to, you know, messaging them and DMing them or, you know, to being out and, you know, at a bar and getting drunk and kissing someone or whatever. I think cheating has to just do with your own personal relationship boundaries and your ideas of what that is. But for me, I think cheating is anything you wouldn't want your partner to know that you are doing or that you did, or you know your partner would be upset by it. I think anything that kind of crosses that line is probably getting into the cheating realm. Jamie says, do you have any getting caught stories? Um, let me think. Okay, once when I was younger, I had a boyfriend and we spent the night at my parents' house. My parents were out of town and so we just like had a sleepover and stayed in their bed. And I remember in the morning, I forgot that we had a housekeeper that came. She came like every Friday and she came and opened the door to my parents' bedroom to like clean the room and we were laying there in bed and she freaked out and I didn't think she was actually going to say anything to my parents because I think she was more shocked like than I even was like she was just shocked to see me there and my boyfriend and so I really thought she wasn't gonna say anything and then like probably four or five days later my parents told me that she told them and they were super angry at me super mad 
And from then on, seeing her was always kind of awkward. We just kind of made eye contact and stuff. Um, that was probably my worst, like, getting caught story. I do know of a girl and a guy that were, like, hooking up in, like, a school parking lot. And then cops pulled up because you weren't allowed to, like, be parked in that parking lot, like, overnight and stuff. And, like, you know, the girl had to like, put her clothes on and they had to explain real quickly, like, what they were doing. But I think the cops kind of already knew. I also remember a girl in high school that, like, hooked up with a guy in one of the bathrooms at school. Which, girl, why would you ever do that? Like, do not do that, please. That's, that's kind of gross. But I remember, like, I guess someone, like, told a teacher or something. And they went in there and they got in a lot of trouble, got suspended and stuff from school. But those are, like, pretty much all the getting caught stories I've heard of. Just stuff that's, like, stupid and you know, you have a big chance of getting caught. And the last question comes from Andrea, and she says, can I trust a guy with pictures? And I still am going to make a video all about pictures and sexting and all that kind of stuff later on. But I would say the honest thing is just no. You know, as much as guys say, oh, I'm not like other guys, or oh, you can trust me, or oh, I love you, you know, I would never do anything. Whether guys are just kind of dumb, or they don't keep their phone safe, or they just, maybe they're proud of them, I don't know. A lot of times, I don't think you can trust a guy to keep a personal, private photo of you private, especially when they're younger. They just, they show people, and they can get sent around, and that is always a risk, and you really need to be careful about that, because it can cause a ton of problems. So I would say, you know, as much as you want to trust someone that you're in a relationship with, or you're dating, or you really like, you got to be really careful and just realize when boys are young, they do really stupid things and it's not worth it. So those are all the questions I'm going to answer on sex and relationships and that kind of stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed the honesty. I will be making a new video soon and I hope to see you guys later.